Now slowly, we are able to solve problems about uh, compliance costs, but the biggest challenge is having uh, increase in supply of affordable housing. Before we continue, let's make a definition of affordable housing correct. Past previous minister has reiterated for categorization of affordable housing, it has been priced between 150,000 to 300,000. And accordingly, built up area should not be more, should not be less than 800 square feet, excluding balcony, with two rooms or three plus one room. Location must be stated. And a good public transportation area, LRT, MRT. I proposed before, I will reiterate again, unlock all the railway quarter lands, RTA, RAC, Railway Assets Corporation, and the ample of lands along the track and station, unlock it for affordable housing category. Do not be taken in by trade organizations saying that affordable housing is 500,000 and below, which should be marked at 300,000. Secondly, for incentive for developers to embark into affordable housing, our suggestion, pandangan saya, bagi pihak HBA adalah berikut. Align those uh, lands at low premium, if possible, even 70% of lands to be used for affordable housing, lower conversion premium, lower corporate tax. It is very important. Developers are not charitable organization. To them, it's just dollar and cents. Therefore, we must come up with an equation in such a way it becomes a tax bracket available for them to make money from there. Accordingly, rather than taxing them full, consider lowering corporate tax for developers who embark on affordable housing. And third, for the other issue, cost of laying last mile. Utility companies like Lembaga Electric Negara were during our legacy days. LLN is no longer LLN, it is called TNB. So doing business must have their own capital outlay. Utility companies like Shabas, ICM, and all that must come up with their own capital and not impose on developers to build substations for them or lay cables for them, whereupon cost is factored into our price. Next other issue I'll talk about, we have two confusing schemes in the market. We have got schemes like Keluar Malaysia Ownership Scheme Initiative, IBA. We have got Home Ownership Campaign, My First Home Scheme, My Deposit Scheme. All these are basically to encourage our rakyat to buy property. We should not embark on asking our rakyat to take 110% loan from banks. We want to cultivate responsible citizens. People able to buy must be in a position to buy not come up with schemes to ask them to buy a property. The bank's finance to 110%. That's making irresponsible house buyer. To become a good house buyer, you must have your own money to buy. Not government feed them with money to buy a property. Because they will make them irresponsible. They will not have to pay for their own because they will not have to pay for their own money. That's where the high deposit coming. It shouldn't be the case. And finally, very importantly, I will say it again. I reiterate that we must have a single data bank whereby developers and house buyers are able to find properties under construction, properties already completed, where location and pricing must be available in the click of a button. Five years ago, we talked about it, it was in the making. Until now, it has not become a reality. I hope YB Minister will make this single pay button data banking to be available to the market. Now there's this issue about residential, residency hectare, Bombak. This is a Malay reserve land with 2,400 house buyers. They're all victims there. This project is delayed since 2017. There's a two-year delay after minus 36 months there. No? I've made proposal over to YP Akmal I've come up, he basically says the bank rocket is available with $78 million to revive the project and I've given proposal. I hope my proposal will, will be heeded by your board partner. Thank you.